Hi, this is Tanya from SUNY Downstate Health Sciences University. We made this video to provide information about what is COVID-19 so that you can stay safe and healthy during this crisis. So, what is COVID-19? COVID-19 stands for the Coronavirus Disease 2019. And what it is, it is a virus that can create mild to severe respiratory disease. Respiratory diseases affect our lungs and our ability to be able to breathe. COVID-19 was first detected in December 2019, and it is highly contagious and is spreading rapidly through communities everywhere. How is it spread? There are two ways. First, it's being spread by person-to-person -person contact. And what we're talking about is close contact, usually less than six feet. And what happens is a person who has the virus will cough and sneeze, and they release these respiratory droplets into the air with the virus, and then others breathe it in. The other way in which it spreads is if we touch an object or a surface that has the virus. For example, maybe a button for the elevator, or maybe that railing going down into the subway, or maybe that handle going into your building. And then what we do is we forget that our hands are dirty and we touch our mouths, our nose, and our eyes. A lot of people ask us, hey, can someone spread the virus without being sick? And the truth is yes. In fact, we believe that this is actually the reason why the virus has been spreading so quickly. A lot of people are just not aware that they have it. They're called asymptomatic. But the truth is the people who are most contagious are those who are symptomatic. They're showing signs of being sick. And those are the people that we need to stay away from. What are the symptoms? There are three. First is to have a fever, a prolonged fever of at least 100.4 for many days. Second is to have a dry, persistent cough that also will not go away. And third is to have shortness of breath. These symptoms will usually show up maybe between two and 14 days after you've been exposed to the virus. So you can imagine if you've been exposed 14 days and you're not showing signs of being sick, you could possibly infect a lot of people. And that's what's happening. Now I know that people are really nervous and anxious about the coronavirus, and we understand, but we want to remind you 80% of the people with COVID-19 are only going to have mild or moderate symptoms. This is going to feel like a really bad cold or really bad flu, something that you've had before. You're going to recognize it and you're going to be able to recover without medical attention. But there are some people, and these are our heroes, who are most at risk of exposure. What I'm talking about, I'm talking about our doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists and all of our healthcare workers that are working in the emergency rooms trying to save people's lives. I'm also talking about our first responders, our police officers, our firemen, and our paramedics that are helping to get sick people to the hospital. I'm also talking about the store owners, the grocery store owners, or the pharmacists that are staying open so that we can get food and our medicine. Unfortunately, they are also being overexposed to COVID-19. And then there are our transit workers. And sadly, this particular group of people are really being exposed and are also suffering. So we mentioned that 80% will have mild or moderate symptoms, but about 15 or 20% are going to have severe disease. And these individuals have particular risk. And so let's talk about that. The first group are, is anyone over the age of 65, older adults. And the reason why is because our immune system starts to go down after 65. And there's something about this virus that really wants to target are weak immune systems. The other risk group is if you have a chronic health problem such as um, heart disease, lung disease such as COPD, emphysema, asthma. I have asthma, I didn't know it was a lung disease, bronchitis. Also, if you have a weakened immune system, uh, maybe you've had cancer or you have it now, you're a person living with HIV, or you have an autoimmune disease like lupus or something else. Finally, if you have diabetes, I know people don't think of diabetes as affecting your immune system, but it does. And also if you have high blood pressure, all of these really make you more at risk for having a severe disease with COVID-19. 
Finally, we've also noticed that if people are smoking or vaping, that they have a higher risk. And if you are a person who's obese or really chunky, then also that is a risk factor. Finally, there are ways that we can protect ourselves. So as I mentioned before, the people who are most contagious are the people who are sick. So it is our responsibility to stay away from people who are sick. Finally, and I know that's gonna sound very simple to wash our hands, but this is probably the most important thing that we can do because the virus gets into our body either by breathing it in or by touching our face. So we need you to wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. And when you do it, you wanna rub your hands, really rub your hands. It's this rubbing action that really gets rid of the virus. If you don't have soap and water, you can use hand sanitizer, but make sure that it has at least 60% alcohol. Finally, I mentioned we want to avoid touching our face. And for some of us, this is a little tricky, especially if we have little people in the house that constantly touch their face, their mouth, their noses, et cetera, and then they wanna kiss you. So it's really important that we try to instill right now good hygiene. And then finally, we really need to step up our game in terms of cleaning and disinfecting. Some of us, this might be easy peasy, but for some of us, we really need to work on this. You need to clean and disinfect all of those areas that are frequently touched in your house. Doorknobs, light switches, um, you need to clean the bathroom. Um, you need to also clean your cell phone. Our cell phones are absolutely dirty. Finally, if you feel sick, this is what we need to suggest. Now, I know forever we've been telling people, if you're sick, please go to the doctor, but not with COVID-19, not during this pandemic. We need you to stay home. I know that sounds weird, but actually staying home is going to save lives and it could save your life as well. We need you to stay home and monitor your symptoms and treat your symptoms. If they get really severe, then that's when you need to go into the emergency room. When you are sick, we need you to contact your doctor if you have one and discuss with them plans in terms of how to manage these COVID-like symptoms. Or maybe you have another chronic ailment and then your doctor can give you information about how to manage both of those symptoms. Finally, if you're sick and you're coughing and sneezing and whatnot, what you need to do is you need to cover it. You know, like what they teach the kids in school, <clears throat> you cough into your arm, that's called the chicken wing, or use a tissue and please dispose of your tissue. And then finally, we are asking people, when you go out into public, wear a face mask or cover your face, especially in places where it's really difficult to maintain social distancing, that is staying six feet apart, the grocery store, or maybe even the pharmacy. If we do all of these things together, we are going to reduce the spread of the virus to others in our community. So finally, I said, stay at home, monitor your symptoms. But for some, you're going to see really like serious warning signs that you need to go to the emergency room. And these are those signs. If you have extreme difficulty breathing, persistent pain or pressure in your chest, if you have confusion, if you're roommate said it was really difficult to wake you up and you were really out of it or if you have bluing in your lips or on your nails this is a sign that you're not getting enough oxygen and this is a sign all of these are signs that you need to seek medical atten attention immediately but what we'd like to do is we'd like to ask you to first have either you or someone else call ahead if you know the hospital you want to go to maybe it's close to where you live call ahead and make sure that they have the resources to help you, okay? Our governor is moving lots of resources around every day and one day one hospital might have resources and another day they might not. So if you call the ER in advance, they'll tell you where to go. Some hospitals like SUNY Downstate Medical Center, we are a COVID only site and so you can always get help here. Now, I wanna tell you this, regardless of your immigration status or your ability to pay, you're a New Yorker, you need medical assistance, you call 311 
or 844-NYC-4NYC and you get medical help. You tell the dispatch that you think that you have COVID so that they can tell the paramedics to protect themselves. And if possible, please put on a face mask so that you can also uh, protect the first responders when they come to get you. So I know that a lot of people have been saying, you know, COVID-19 is just like the flu. It's not. This is a new virus. We don't know this virus. We've never seen it before. With the flu, we've had 500 years of trying to develop a vaccine. We have a vaccine for the flu, but we do not have a vaccine for the coronavirus. Also, we don't have a specific treatment for the coronavirus as of yet. We hope in the future there will be both a vaccine and good treatment. But in the meantime, we need for you to stay in touch with your doctor or call SUNY Downstate Telemedicine to get further advice on how to treat your symptoms. This is a number to call for the coronavirus hotline, 1-888-364-3065. So remember, please follow these suggestions and stay safe and healthy. Thank you.